So what I want to talk about is exercise and uh, movement for pain. That's really my kind of number one subject that I enjoy talking about. And hopefully other people uh, enjoy talking about it uh, too at some point. So my original uh, presentation was going to be called moving away, from ex uh, moving away from Exercise and Towards Movement. And the real reason I wanted to talk about this was because of the idea that we sometimes might need to reconceptualise the idea of exercise for some people into the concept of movement. And the real reason we have to do that is because we're dealing with human beings. And one of the big things that I want to do with understanding pain science is start to view things like exercise and movement as things that human beings do, not that ligaments do or tendons do or bits of muscle and gristle. You know, we have to think about the human being. So that was kind of what I was going to um, talk about before. But my presentation has become a lot broader. And really what I want to look at is exercise through a pain science lens or exercise and movement through a pain science lens. And some of the things that we are trying to achieve through using movement and exercise. Who thinks movement and exercise is a fairly powerful tool that we can use to help people? Absolutely, it's something people can do to themselves. But sometimes we need to look at the psychology um, and the social aspects and factors behind movement and exercise rather than, say, the physical or physiological or biological factors. I think they're the most important things. And how often do we talk mostly about those physical and biological and physiological factors? I was reading a Cochrane review recently of exercise for chronic pain. And I was looking in and reading through the methodology, etc. And what I found was that the, the measures that they were looking at within this review from all these studies for chronic pain were still looking at very, very physical measures. So they looked at strength, they looked at range of movement, they looked at endurance. These were the factors that they were measuring. Now, one of the things that pain science teaches us, it's not all about these physical things. It's about other things as well. It's about things that maybe don't relate to these simple physical factors that go beyond that. And I think that's something that we need to talk about and when we can talk about it and learn about it and understand about it, maybe we can also do something about it as well. And we can start to reconceptualise our ideas of what movement and exercise do for people. And maybe what we can enhance and change and play around with. Okay, so maybe moving away from some of these physical factors and thinking a little bit more about some of the other factors that, that we can start to think about. So I kind of scrapped that, right? So this is my favourite measurement, the shit ton, right? So that's one shit ton. Now, if I was to say to you 4,582 papers came out last year about chronic pain, you'd all turn around to each other and nod in kind of, yeah, we know, that sounds like a lot. If I was to say one shit ton, everyone would turn around and go, the only you really know what that means, you know? So, but we have all this wonderful information, you know, dating back to Melzac and Wall and, you know, progressing through and Steve McMahon and all these great pain uh, scientists. And we have all these new ways of conceptualising and looking at pain. But we still very much see exercise as this very, very physical thing. We're still at attempting to change these measures of strength or range of movement, etc. And there's these other things. So, uh, Melissa's talk yesterday really resonated with me. So when we look at chronic pain, where do, what brain areas do we see kind of light up and start to, be, um, start to be lit up? You know, like the uh, effective emotional areas of the brain. You know, so if we're going to get people exercising and moving, would fun be a good thing? Would that be one of our major outcome measures? Just getting people moving and having fun changing people's perception of what it means to move and the emotional attachments that they might have to that. You know, so, but I don't ever see people have that as an outcome measure. Maybe it's, I'm, you know, I'm not a scientist. But certainly it's one of these things that clinically, I think it would be a wonderful thing that we start to think about. Just exercising and moving for the concept of fun. How does that change someone's perception? How does it change their future predictions? We know our brains are these wonderful Bayesian inference machines and we base our future predictions off our previous experiences. So one of our aims for exercise and movement is to restore someone's enjoyment. How many people who have chronic pain don't enjoy moving? 